Hi, Patrick. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Phil? I'm doing just fine. Hey, listen, when did we start planning for this do-it-yourself fair? I think probably in, in August. August 2012, right. We started talking about having a fair at the Martin Luther King Library in downtown D.C. and that it would be really interesting and useful to try and do it in the fall. Uh, to bring together lots of different stakeholders who are interested in creativity and invention, entrepreneurship, and adaptive technology. You work in which division of the library? The Adaptive Services Division of the DC Public Library, and we're located on the second floor of the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library, which is our central branch, um, 9th and G Street. Good. And the purpose of your division is? To serve people with disabilities, uh, we provide adaptive technologies and um, bo audio books and a number of other services uh, to make sure that the library is accessible to everyone. Right. And this do-it-yourself fair that you and I are planning, uh, it, it's an outgrowth of the uh, DC Accessibility Camp, right? That's been going on for a couple of years. That's right. This uh, just had our fourth annual Accessibility Camp which is an opportunity for the web accessibility community to get together and share information. Right. And about 100 people showed up. It was, I was there. It was, it was real exciting. Uh, um, it was an unconference, meant that it was very spontaneous and uh, lots of interesting information sharing. Patrick, um, describe for the viewers here, what's the venue like for this, um, for this event, the, the, the Great Hall? Right, we'll be holding this event on Saturday, November 17th and Sunday, November 18th in the Great Hall of the Martin Luther King Library. Um, it's, uh, the hours are going to be uh, 10 o'clock to 3 on Saturday and 1.30 to 4.30 on Sunday. Um, the Great Hall is basically the center of the library. It's uh, two, two tall stories high and it would probably hold about 800 people if you packed people in. But it's basically the center of the library. If it, right as you come in the front door, it's the giant room in front of you um, that, uh, on, on G Street. Right. And this particular library is pretty accessible to public transit, right? Right. Any line, any metro line um, that you're on, you can get within a block and a half of the library. The 11th Street exit of Metro Center is a block and a half from us. And the Ninth Street exit of the Gallery Place Chinatown Metro stop is right across the street from us. Right. So, um, talk. What What's the purpose of this uh, the event? Well, we want um, to celebrate uh, creativity um, of of the creativity of people with and without disabilities. So that means. Uh, cool technologies like 3D printing and robotics. It means sewing and handcrafted goods. Anything that people make. This is a maker community event. Um, so, you know, especially in the disability community, but it's open to everybody. Right. Now, this event is following up on DC Week. What's, what's DC Week about? Well, DC Week is an opportunity for the, uh, the um, developer community in DC to get together uh, with the uh, government and nonprofit or um, people who need things to be built for them. And the uh, developer community gets together and, and tries to see what they can build in the city. Um, we are participating um, uh, by, we had a computer programming uh, class for kids with disabilities last Saturday. We'll be building up to an accessibility hackathon uh, this coming Saturday, November 10th. So, um, yeah, and uh, the DC Week is, is another uh, annual event, happens at the beginning of November every year. Right. Now, by developers, you, I think uh, you're describing software programmers, right? M mostly, yeah, when we say developers, um, the people who build things, right. people who make things. Uh, the Maker Fair is a much more generalized version right. of this kind of a thing. Right. Good. Good. Um, when I, when I attended that accessibility camp, um, one of the talks that I was at was from United Cerebral Palsy. How are those folks interested in this topic? Well, they, uh, the Life Labs at uh, United 
uh, cerebral palsy is dedicated to creating a um, accessible makerspace um, that comes up with accessibility solutions. So uh, that will be a way to carry this energy on for, uh, further than just this fall when a lot of our programs this fall are dedicated to getting the uh, makers together with the people who have needs or requirements and um, the uh, space, the maker space that the UCP um, establishes will be a place to take our ideas and to build them. We're going to have a monthly um, uh, meetup that in, uh, includes UCP and the library and we'll have it at the library every month and some of the ideas that get generated there can then get built in the uh, maker space that will have things like 3D printers and um, you know, uh, more complex technologies. That is so exciting and I remember them explaining that they're not sure if they're going to have their own maker space or if they're going to participate in an existing maker space. Yes, and they're still looking for a location. They they started on uh, K Street, but found it a little bit expensive. Um, so they're they're interested in finding a space. Right. Well, there's an opportunity for some kind of sponsor out there. You heard you heard that news about George Lucas, right? He's uh, uh, pledged that he's going to be taking the four billion dollars that he uh, gets from the sale of his company uh, and and devoting that to education. Good for him. Wow. Yeah, that you know, he's selling it um, to Disney. George Lucas is, is selling it to Disney just in the past week, and uh -huh. uh, so that's that's really wonderful news. Um, and hopefully, that money can uh, go to some of these exciting developments in um, the do-it-yourself and maker movement. Um, um, I wanted to. Um, I want you to tell me a little bit. You, you had some contacts with some folks at Google. Uh, was it Vint Surf over there that you had some contacts with? Yeah, uh, the F uh, Federal Communications Commission held a um, an open meeting at the Martin Luther King Library a year or two back and invited a number of folks in the disability community um, to come and talk about accessible um, services and especially broadband. This is at the beginning of their broadband push. Um, and you know it, they were uh, opened the the, um, the forum to people from the community to suggest solutions, um, and so we after the forum we invited people to come upstairs and see um, one of one of our solutions, which is the Adaptive Services Division, and Vint Surf as well as a couple of other folks, uh, Greg Vonderheiden I think from the Trace Center, and, uh, and a few other folks came up to visit the division, and we're really excited. Um, by what they saw. I know, uh, I think Vince Cerf is hard of hearing himself, uh, is, right. it has an interest in the disability community right. and um, he gave us a lot of great suggestions and, and, and chatted for a while with us and then I've uh, communicated with him on a couple of occasions since then so um, we would love to have input from from the big companies um, so now that we uh, have our registration site up at uh, Eventbrite I'm going to be um, sending that out uh, to him and a bunch uh, a couple other folks in the in the local community right and for those who might not know uh, Vince Cerf is somewhat of a legend in the computer field the co-inventor of TCP IP which is the language of the internet he did that work in the um, early 1970s and um, is currently a vice president at Google um, do you know who I would like to uh, invite, and they might be able to come, or maybe not, but the Koshland Science Museum. It's, I think, just a couple of blocks away from, um, from the library, MLK Library, and we're going to be having the Fab Lab folks come over, and um, the DC Kids and Technology Meetup that uh, my friend Yusuf Abdi and I started a year or two ago we're going to have some kids there who are really good at scratch programming. These are elementary school kids and they'll be able to show or explain some scratch stuff. Uh, they're also really good at Minecraft. Um, that's the 3D building uh, um, web environment that is popular with certain kids and um, the event really is open for anybody who is inventive to come and show uh, anything of interest. I think I'm going to be setting up um, a Linux station with something called multi-seat Fedora, 
Fedora 17. It's free software and it allows multiple keyboards and monitors all to be connected to one computer. Um, it's a way of uh, one computer sharing its computing resources. It could be pretty helpful for certain libraries, cyber cafes, even in people's homes. I set up my own multi-seed on, on an old um, Dell Dimension 3000. It wasn't even a very powerful computer and three people could use it at the same time. It was pretty exciting to see it. We also uh, have, I think, DC uh, Robots in DC um, was interested in, in having a, a display. Um, also, you know, from, the last, from our computer programming class last Saturday, we had um, one of the kids who was interested in, in uh, showing his art. He's a, um, an artist who's displayed his works. He has low vision and he's displayed his paintings at the uh, library before. He'd be interested in doing that as well as uh, we have a snap circuits um, board, you know, breadboard that uh, allows people to put snap circuits together. And um, we're going to be working with HackDC to make that uh, snap circuits accessible to everybody, meaning uh, make it not color coded, make it large print, um, and simplifying the directions. So, and we had one person who was interested in doing all of that at a couple of tables. So, that's neat. And for those who don't know, Hack DC is a is a makerspace here in DC in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood. Uh, they've been working on a couple of pretty exciting different projects. Um, the one that really engages me a lot is their um, mesh network. Uh, that has been bringing Wi-Fi throughout the neighborhood to folks who might not have internet access. Um, that's some very, very interesting things happening there. So we're hoping that anybody who sees this video who lives here in the DC area might be able to stop by either Saturday or Sunday or maybe both days. I'll be there both days. And um, this is... Um, we're hoping the first of several gatherings, annual gatherings, that might encompass more than the DC library. We might have other library systems come on board. We got great bandwidth at this library. Last time I measured it, it was um, 20 megabits per second upstream Wi-Fi. Uh, so the bandwidth is pretty good. And um, that would allow us to do some kind of hangouts between libraries uh, and other entities besides libraries, museums, schools, community centers. Um, we really, we got to get a lot of more people in, on board um, in this do-it-yourself movement. Uh, I've always felt that you, you can never do it yourself unless you have the help of a community. So, um, uh, um, Patrick, anything else you wanted to share? Um, about this, uh, oh, you know what? I, I, I'm real interested to hear more about the work that you do um, at the Adaptive Services Division. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Adaptive Services um, consists of four different services. The Adaptive Technology Program, which is what I do. We provide technologies uh, so that people can get access to the library services. Um, there's also a, a Librarian for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing community. Um, Janice Rosen, and uh, we have an, a service to at-home readers, and um, probably the most fundamental service that we provide is audiobooks. Um, we are a regional library of the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. Um, we send audiobooks to people's homes um, and provide them with the uh, digital talking book player and the cassette player so that they can read um, those audiobooks, and we provide Braille as well. So uh, those are our four services. The Adaptive Technology Program, which I run, provides technologies. We also do training. Chris Corrigan is our Adaptive Technology Trainer, has an online curriculum, and he teaches in-house classes on a daily basis. And then um, I organize events like the uh, one that uh, we are doing together, as well as we have a bi-weekly Saturday technology training session. Um, Tech Talk Tuesdays where people can learn iOS accessibility and hopefully now Android, which is um, becoming accessible as well to people who are blind or have low vision. And we have a game night. We have all sorts of other uh, sign language story hour, uh, free American sign language classes, um, a sensory story time. We've got talking book club. Uh, those are uh, some, of, some of our uh, programs that we have at the library. That sounds pretty extensive. 
and you just recently added your accessible games section. That's right. We're working with Mark Barlet from Able Gamers, um, and he provided uh, us with the first um, accessibility arcade, permanent accessibility arcade, um, at the Martin Luther King Library. We're really excited about it. We've got uh, Connect, uh, oh, two two Xboxes, an Alienware, and um, a number of iPads that uh, are configurable iPads. We've got a Makey Makey. Um, so uh, we're excited to um, to invite people into our our new accessible arcade and uh, watch what they come up with because the most important thing is that people come up with their own adaptions. Um, in the course of playing the games and making them accessible to themselves, um, and they're innovating all the time, so we're really excited about it. Wow. Um, this is shaping up to be a real interesting event, and um, I should also mention that there is a strong FIRST robotics community here in the D.C. area, and the FIRST LEGO League uh, for the younger folks, and so there might well be some FIRST robotics folks there at a table um, those people gather together on an email list called DC Robotics that is sponsored by uh, a company in Silver Spring, Anthrotronics, whose founder, the founder of that company, uh, Corey Lathan, was named Maryland Inventor of the Year. So she uh, walks the walk and talks the talk on this invention stuff. Uh, she's got two graduate degrees from MIT. Um, so, uh, the D.C. area is a pretty interesting uh, metropolitan area in terms of ideas. We, we haven't, we're falling a little bit behind some of the other cities, like backwaters like New York City. They've been, they've been organizing themselves better than we are, so it's time we got off our, our uh, rear ends and, and did some interesting stuff here, right here in our, the nation's capital. Right, and this is a good this is a good way to start that movement. It's especially exciting to me because uh, this event is going to be uh, to to rest on or to have at its center the disability community, and I think you know it's important for the maker community to recognize that uh, that disabilities uh, and this is not a negative thing that disabilities are central to the process of innovation um, that the disabilities come first really um, you can take that all the way back to language. Um, and the, the imaginary clearing in the forest and who do you think came up with language? Was it the people who were sitting around the fire happily or was it the people who were out in the woods, um, you know, uh, needing to come up, needing to get access to the community? So it's the people at the fringes who come up with, uh, with innovations and again that's not meant to be a negative thing. It's just to say that the goal here is to push consciousness forward, to become more and more conscious of the process of innovation and how it happens. Um, that's something that we recognize in the disability community, and um, you know, and are and are happy that the uh, the maker community is is has come around to the point where they are um, w you know willing to put the disability community at the center of this event. That's a great thing. We're really excited about it. I have to say, I totally agree with you. Well, one of the most inspiring of all inventors that I know of is Louis Braille, who invented Braille for his own needs, but his. Uh, opened up a world of understanding for millions of people worldwide and uh, Alexander Graham Bell. Um, we, we've got some historical examples that are very poignant uh, about um, people working on solutions for disabilities that ended up uh, affecting the course of civilization. Absolutely. Albert Einstein, right, Stephen Hawking. All uh, examples of people who have disabilities, and you know th that's why we're really eager to have people from Google and Apple and Microsoft come in because there's so many people, you know, in the computer community who have gray area disabilities. Especially younger folks these days are are quicker to recognize and use language like autism and Asperger's, and um, the, the old, and older folks, you know, can recognize the facts but might not be self-identified or as comfortable with it. So this is an opportunity. To, for uh, you know, for people to self-identify or for people to um, get behind the disability movement and um, and uh, you know and make things happen. So we we really appreciate the energy. Patrick, I got to thank you, and I got to thank all the other folks in your division. When when I first broached this idea with you, when we started talking, um, we quickly realized that it was possible, but it was only possible because. Uh, of the institutional values that your library has. 
Um, and that's uh, that's something to be commended. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you there, November oh. 17. There's 17th and 18th, right? Yes, uh, 17th from 10, 10 to 3, and the 18th Sunday from 1.30 to 4.30. Great. We'll see you all there. Okay, see you then.